So to the mood music's changing, it's uh, seeming as if the one more and done is now essentially perhaps the messages are coming out, even though we've got a somewhat fissured Fed. We are delivering that message as well. You know, from our global economics team, we feel one more and done is the way to go for the Fed. Um, there have been concerns about the banking sector turmoil in the developed markets. Um, but at the same time, the job reports are still relatively strong. So, you know, we feel that the Fed possibly can't really take its foot off the pedal right now. You know, but at the same time, over tightening remains a risk and the Fed would possibly be mindful of that as well. You know, so yes, one more and done is possibly the way to go. Manishi, so what now then? What's is it time to go big on you know growth, mm. high duration assets? What's the investment call then? I would say not right now. You know, because we are no doubt going into a situation of a Fed pivot, but it's the kind of pivot that's been partly driven by a liquidity crunch globally, by the banking sector turmoil, which doesn't really give, um, you know, kind of a full-fledged comfort about going more into high beta. You know, so as we uh, said uh, in our last report that keep the seed belts tightened. Um, we no doubt like Asian equities, and we think in the second half of this year, Asian equities would be outperforming developed markets, as we have seen in the instances of Fed rates speaking out historically. Um, but in the near term, we still might see some volatility, which actually leads us to focus more on some of the defensive pockets like consumer staples across the region, particularly in China, um, continuing to stick to the high dividend yield stocks, you know, like the SOEs in China and so on. Where are you seeing flows though at the moment? It seems like the shift is, is still towards North Asia, some of these tech plays. Is that the right call? Because, you know, obviously there's still the recession odds that are rising in Europe, U.S. and in Europe. But then again, you also have the China reopening story that's lifting a lot of these benchmarks as well, like Taiwan, like Korea, for example. Absolutely. And you're quite correct in pointing out that the focus of the flows are still towards North Asia. I think China reopening and the most recent PMI data, the the March uh, 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 bank credit data, these are clearly encouraging signs about economic and particularly consumption recovery in China and North Asia. We are also positive on uh, the policy beneficiaries in China. Electric vehicles, for instance, I'm sitting right now in our, at our EV conference, the Asia Pacific Electric Vehicle Conference, widely attended by companies and, and, and uh, institutional investors, which is absolutely the right place to be. I mean, even though we have seen some degree of um, competitive pressures leading to price declines, um, it's a space that we're quite selectively bullish on. Um, we are also seeing flows into the North Asian tech companies, despite the concerns about um, recessions in developed markets. Um, but at the same time, the capacity cut announcements by the leading players are giving the investors some hope about demand supply uh, matching in 2024. Manisha, you mentioned declining prices. Now, with inflation prints out of China looking distinctly anemic, couldn't you also argue here that what was essentially a country which exported disinflation to the world a few years ago could do it again? Um, it could. I would think that such a, a situation could possibly be kind of far-fetched because um, you know, I mean, if one looks at the the components of 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 inflation, you know, in terms of food products, in terms of raw materials, um, in terms of fuel and energy, they're still quite elevated compared to where they were about a couple of years ago. Um, we're also seeing um, some degree of consumption recovery in entire North Asia, which could potentially percolate down to South Asia as well. And that obviously is good news for some of the commodity prices, maybe not for all of them. 
You know, so um, while we think that inflation is likely to moderate, no doubt, we're already seeing signs of that. Would we get into another round of disinflation? I really don't subscribe to that idea.